So welcome to the last part of the first lecture of this course in wireless networking. So in this video lecture, we will delve into the process of signal propagation from an antenna. And we will examine common mode of propagation for electromagnetic uh, radio waves. Additionally, we will explore various wireless standards and methods for characterizing uh, them. So after modulating a carrier signal and converting it into an electromagnetic wave, the next step is understanding how the signal propagates from the antenna from a transmitter to a receiver. And there are three distinct modes of radio wave propagation that we are going to study. These are ground wave propagation, sky wave propagation, and line of sight propagation. So let's look into some of these propagation into greater detail. So to begin with, let's discuss ground wave propagation. So this method refers to radio waves that travel along the Earth's contour or surface. The typical frequency range for these signals is up to two megahertz. That means that the wavelength is, uh, is in the order of uh, tens of meters. And these radio waves can easily propagate for few hundred kilometers. A prime example of ground wave propagation is these AM radios that were used a uh, couple of decades back, which were widely used to allow for transmission of audio broadcast over long distances. And these distances could even span uh, the significant uh, uh, parts of our entire country. Next, we will examine the sky wave propagation. So this method utilizes uh, uh, the ions uh, in the atmosphere and it, it actually operates for frequencies between 3 to 30 megahertz. So the atmosphere contains this layer of ion that can reflect radio waves. And what happens is that the transmit antenna sends a radio wave which is then reflected by ionosphere and this process continues and allows these radio waves to achieve significant uh, co communication uh, ranges. So sky wave propagation is commonly used for short wave and crystal radio technology. Finally, we come to the third propagation that uh, that is line of sight propagation. And this is most commonly also used for some of the wireless devices that we use in our day-to-day -day life. And it occurs when the transmitting and receiving antennas are in direct view of each other. And this method commonly works for higher frequencies. Even for example, it can go up to tens of gigahertz like millimeter wave communication. And usually it has little obstructions for the radio waves uh, between the transmitting and the receiving antenna. So while these are the main propagation modes, the real world environment is actually much more complex. Typically, we find that there are many objects that are much larger than the wavelength of the radio waves. And this means that the radio waves can be blocked by these objects, but also the radio waves can be reflect refracted and reflected from the surrounding environment. In addition, wireless communication also takes place on shared medium. That means that within the same frequency band, we could have other radios transmitting information. And all of this can cause interference to the desired signal and it can cause impact to the quality of the, uh, the signal. To further illustrate this complexity of wireless communication, we show on the slide three ways wireless signals can be impacted. These include reflection of surfaces or buildings. It could diffract around obstacles and objects, or the radio signals could be even scattered uh, by uh, uh, by objects which are uh, larger than the wavelength of the uh, the radio waves. All of these factors affect the strength of the signal and the quality of the wireless signals. The results of these real world effect is that quality of signal can vary leading to issues uh, in applications such as buffering of video or slow downloads. And to address these challenges, significant research has been conducted to mitigate the fluctuation in wireless channel to ensure better communication and quality. And th this is something you can study if you take advanced courses in, uh, in this area. So now that we have a deeper understanding of the various propagation modes and real world effects that can impact wireless sig signals, let's examine how different wireless technologies can be uh, characterized. 
So we can evaluate and distinguish wireless networks and technologies based on four different parameters, including communication range, data rate, power consumption, and the frequency or uh, the band of uh, operation. Let's begin by examining frequency and data rate. Technologies such as Wi-Fi and 4G uh, offer high bit rates and operate at frequencies of several gigahertz. On the other hand, typical IoT communication standards typically support lower data rates and most IoT and sensor applications only transmit uh, small amounts of data. And they usually are at the orders of few tenth, a few kilobits to tens of kilobits of uh, data rate. Next, we could also evaluate technologies based on range and frequency. It is observed that the lower frequency tends to result in much greater communication range. Uh, the typically standards such as LoRa for uh, IoT achieve uh, kilometers of communication range where uh, 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 standards such as Wi-Fi can achieve only tens of meters of uh, communication range. Finally, we analyze power consumption of these technologies and it is very clear that IoT technologies have significantly lower power consumption compared to the others. In fact, backscatter communication, which we will study in this course, may not even appear on this graph due to its extremely low power consumption. So despite the availability of various wireless standards and technology, it might not be straightforward to fulfill specific requirement of a particular application. For example, achieving a long range while maintaining low data rates and power consumption for IoT applications may present a challenge as we are going to see in this particular example. So we can observe that there is a relationship between throughput and uh, range by looking into the following graph. Wi-Fi offers, for example, high throughput but a limited range. While the IoT standards such as Bluetooth and Zigbee provide lower range uh, provide lower throughput, but a slightly higher or comparable range compared to Wi-Fi. However, one of the most crucial parameters for IoT devices is their power consumption and cost. And as we can see, increasing the range or throughput results in higher power consumption and cost and vice, uh, vice versa. So 2G and 4G and uh, 3G, which are all wireless, uh, uh, cellular standards, they have higher power, higher cost, and they also achieve higher throughput compared to the typical IoT standards. Whereas if we look at, for example, long range, low power, wide area networks, which is also was something we are going to talk about in this course, they're typically used in IoT devices. And achieving these long range at low power is a challenging task because it requires a balance between power consumption, throughput, and range. And long range communication protocol typically tend to have higher power consumption with lower throughput and a higher range, which may not entirely meet the low power consumption requirement of typical IoT devices. So with this, I conclude this first lecture of this uh, course on uh, wireless networking. We talked about uh, the, uh, uh, the basics of wireless propagation, the basics of wireless communication, the typical IoT devices, and the different parameters that can be used to characterize wireless technologies and uh, standards. So thank you very much.